Alright, this is my bike. This is the Kawasaki Vulcan 500. Just going to do a little walk around here so you can get a good look at this thing. A little dirty right there. <laughs> Probably should have washed it first. Skip the rear view so you don't see my plate. Close here. See, I'm at 26.54 miles. And this is what she sounds like when she starts up. Alright, now I'll take her for a little ride on the road and we'll talk about what I like and don't like about this bike. Kawasaki Vulcan 500. You know, number one, if you're a fucking geek, you have to have this bike because, you know, it's named Vulcan. So, how can you buy anything but the Vulcan? You know, if they had uh, any other bikes that had other geek names, maybe I would have looked at them, but Vulcan, come on, motherfuckers. You know, when I'm driving down the road and I see other bikes and, you know, they want to do the wave, you know, I got, I'm just going to give them the, uh, you know, the Vulcan live long and prosper sign, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's got great gas mileage. You know, you get 50 miles a gallon on this thing. Uh, so that was one major benefit of this bike. Uh, what else? You know, it did. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty colors. It's red and chrome. So uh, it looks good. People say, hey, I like your bike, but then again, they'd say that no matter what your bike was, so who knows. I like it. You know, I'm a, I'm a tall guy, six foot two, so I was a little concerned about getting a bike that, uh, that I wouldn't fit on it, or my knees would be hitting handlebars or whatnot, and, you know, I, I haven't had any problems with this. I, I seem to fit just fine on the bike. Um, it, it's got enough power to... To hit highway speeds, you know, even though I'm a fat bastard, uh, I can do 80 on this bike with no uh, no issues. Uh, I didn't try to go faster because <laughs> I just haven't had the balls to to try to uh, go over 80. Uh, you know, I typically don't go much over 80 in a car, so I'm not, definitely not going to do that on a bike. Holy fuck, pterodactyl! So it's a 500. It's it's got a lot of power. It, it, it's a Kawasaki uh, Ninja 500 motor. So for those of you that are sports bike riders, you can uh, compare the two here, I guess. So the downsides of the Kawasaki Vulcan. Yeah, there's there's some downsides to this thing for sure. Uh, one thing that may not come across in the video here is is the location of the uh, speedometer. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm looking. You, in the camera, you might be able to see it. I, I don't know where the camera angle is right now, but uh, in the camera, you might be able to see the speedometer, but I can't. I'm, you know, I'm looking down right now, and I can't see my speedometer, so I really have to just go by feel. So I really just have to look down like this in order to see how fast I'm going, which isn't terribly healthy, I, me thinks. So... I don't like that, and again, that's probably mostly due to my height. And again, this is the only bike I've ever ridden, so I really have nothing to compare it to, other than you know videos of bikes I've seen online. And you know, I've seen people that have uh, you know like digital layouts, like like right here, and uh, you know that that seems to be a better spot for me personally for uh, the speedometer. I guess if I wasn't wearing a full face helmet, I could see it, but uh, still it seems uh, it seems a little low to me. I, I really have to you know, look down in order to see my speedometer. You know, it seems a little uh, unhealthy to me. Uh, it also doesn't have a fuel gauge, something I don't like. You know, I'm used to driving a car and, and knowing exactly when I'm out of fuel. <clears throat> Come on, dude. You can do it. There we go. So, 
uh, just having this little dial and relying on this little dial to tell me when I'm running low on fuel just isn't terribly convenient. You know, I have uh, I have three small kids at home, uh, and it's just a matter of time before they hop on my bike and start playing with it and realize that, ooh, look, a spinny thing, ooh, spinny, and they spin it and they see the numbers changing and they'll, you know, they'll get a real pisser out of that. So it, it it's only a matter of time before that happens, and when that does happen, I'm really going to be screwed. I'm going to have no idea how much. Uh, I have left <laughs> or on a gas. You know, at this point, I you know I have enough experience with the bike where I realize that you know once I hit about 125 miles, uh, that's when I need gas or I need to switch it into reserve. <laughs> and the bike will certainly let me know. This this I found out the hard way when I'm driving down the road and uh, it just suddenly conks out. Another thing I don't like uh, in this bike is the mirror positions. So I don't know if you can tell in my video, but uh, from where I sit naturally, when I look at my left mirror, about three quarters of it is blocked by my arm. And on the right side, it's about, you know, about half of it is blocked by my arm. You might be even be able to see that in the camera angle. <clears throat> and I know it's an easy fix, so, it, it, you know, it's not really a major complaint. It's just something that you need to be aware of. Uh, that, uh, you know, it, oh, and it's because I'm a bigger boy, I'm sure. I'm sure if you're, a, you know, a twerp. <laughs> Just love that word, twerp. I'm sure if you're a twerp, you might uh, not have such a problem with the mirror positions. So my biggest complaint about this bike would have to be the seat. After driving around for about a half hour, maybe, maybe less than that, because it definitely, you know, doesn't just suddenly hit after a half hour, but after driving around for a little bit, our tailbone just starts crying in agony. Just, it gets so painful that I have to pull over and just get on my feet for a few minutes just to, just to give my tailbone a rest. And even now, um, you know, I've worked around this problem by getting a, an air hawk. Uh, I'm, it's just a seat cushion. It's an air seat cushion, the air hawk. And I bought that because I know I can take it from one bike to the next, or or take it from this bike and, and use it anywhere, really. Uh, but that would really have to be my biggest problem with this bike, is that seat. So, I mean, with the Airhawk, I can uh, really go, you know, twice the amount of time before it gets to the same point. So, Airhawk, good. Default seat, bad. <laughs> Anyway, that's, uh, that's about it for my review. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. I uh, will try to answer the, anything that you throw my way. All right? Until next time.